Right, this is it. This is the one. First day, the first night I spent in prison. It's got to be the most exciting, scary moment ever, really. Because I was only, I was only like 16, uh, and I can remember going on the minibus to, to, to prison. And I, I was really excited because I wanted to know what prison were like. But uh, at the same time, I was scared because I didn't know what to expect. You get up for breakfast at half past seven. Uh, you have your breakfast. You have to go and get your breakfast from the server. Take it back to your cell and eat your breakfast in your cell. Uh, I had my own cell on a few occasions, but on a few occasions I, I shared a cell as well. I think routine makes, makes things easier. Uh, Especially in prison, because when, when, when the routine gets broken, like, so, so the mail didn't come or you didn't get no canteen, people would just kick off. Uh, well, yeah, what, what it were, when I first got on drugs, uh, well, heroin, uh, was uh, I, were, I was 16 years old and I was in a gang called the ASV, which stands for Hash Smoking Vandals. Uh, and we were in this gang and all we used to do was smoke cannabis and go and graffiti on, on walls, uh, and tagging on walls and graffiti and stuff like that. And then one of my mates went to this party and and got introduced to heroin and then brought it down to us the next day and then we all we all started taking this heroin. Uh, I really liked it straight away, like, like the buzz it gave me and everything. And at the same time, I was working at college, uh, not working, I was at college, and there was this other uh, kid that were working there and he was taking heroin and uh, we ended up taking heroin together at college and then all of a sudden I got addicted to it and then everything just collapsed really. Well, I mean, my dad had been on it all my life and I can remember like when I was at school and people used to like say, Devil whispers in the background scream If you've ever been to hell then you'll know what I mean Devil whispers in the background scream If you've ever been to hell then you'll know what I mean and, uh, I was and I think that it just sticks with me to this day. The heroin is just an embarrassment. My first encounter with jail guitar dogs was in Dartmoor Prison. Uh, I was uh, on the resettlement unit. I'd been in prison two and a half years. I was due to be released. Uh, and Billy Bragg, a musician, uh, he, were, he were doing a project called Jail Guitar Dolls, going around prisons, getting guitars into prison, so inmates can rehabilitate themselves through music uh, and I, I met Billy uh, about three months before I was getting out of Dartmoor prison and um, yeah it, I played him a song I, I got my guitar he told me to get my guitar and I got my guitar played him a song and he, and he liked it and he just 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 said when you get out get in touch and, and you can be a part of Jail Guitar Dolls and I did and I got in a documentary and went on tour and everything with him I played glass and belly and that way and yeah it's just so easy to, 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 to go back down the old, old path sort of, and get caught up in doing the, the, the old stuff that I used to do. Because I've done it before, there's been times I've been clean before, like for a year. I've, I've, I've had a job for a year and then I was working on a scheme for a year and then the scheme finished. And as soon as the scheme finished, I ended up getting back on drugs. And, and like, so yeah, I think that, you know, Crime's always round, around the corner for me because of my, my addiction trouble. When it were basically a, a bunch of guys that wanted to learn guitar coming together into a room, someone that actually knew how to play guitar, showing them what to do, just in a group sort of thing, and then they'd, they'd, they'd take part in two groups a week, uh, which is really positive as well because if you're in a group, if you're in a group and you're doing music, it opens you up, do you know what I mean? And so there's, so there's people that, that that don't like to socialise with people. It sort of brings you out and, and, and then you you start... I mean, music's just a, a... It brings people together, doesn't it? And people that are not similar to each other, they can have something in common. And it can be just through, through music. I want to go there till next February. Yeah, I, said, I can remember when I seen Glastonbury, I, I actually picked my guitar up and, and wrote a song uh, about Glastonbury. It's a bit sad, really, when I watch that. Because it just makes you realise what, what you're missing. I think I think that would be a, a, good, a good next thing to do, actually, with Jerry Tardar, is to get a workshop outside. 
So when people get released, they can carry on doing it. I've been in prison uh, five times now. I think it's good to get you off drugs because you're locked behind the door. As soon as, you, as soon as you've done that, there's no further help. They do it in a small way, but it's known, do you know what I mean? I, I think if, if I could, if I had the power to do it, I think what would make people stay clean and, and get a, a normal life is when they first get out of prison, then first three week is actually having a mentor with them. And I mean every day to get them to come with to like go and look for a job every day, sort of keep that motivation up once you get released and getting you into a job and like sort of just sticking by and then slowly leaving you to it. Because if I'd have had that, to me, I know for a fact that I'd have succeeded.